of authority is that they're nice, friendly, and all this, but really you know they're abusing. Meaning, I think you can see behind the veil of people that says, oh yeah, believe me, and it can be an authority of any type, which is, um, I think, when you look at the government, you look at whatever you may protest about, whatever it is, I think that you go, no, I'm not going to believe this because I know somewhere that you are lying or abusing, okay? And so now I'm going to ask a little further. So in the dream, he was abusing. So there was abusing of authority. So where is it that you might be abusing authority? And where is it that you see authority being abused? And where is it that in the parenting part? Now, uh, do you have kids or no kids? I don't think you have any kids. But have you watched other people parent and you would, you would step back and say, well, I wouldn't do it that way. And we'll just have to wait for her to respond and see what she says. Um, because there is a little bit here. Now, two, the number two, because it's just kind of stood out to me. Well, two months. Two. Yes, with two. Um, everything's fine and will continue to be so. Keep believing, especially since your feelings of hope lead to more positive outcomes. The angels can bo buoy your... Bleh. Buoy. Buoy your faith if you're all, you will ask for their help. Now, two is about that balance and bringing the yin and yang together, bringing that balance back. So there might be a part of you that is ready to face something. And with that in mind, may we do a reading on you a little bit further. And hopefully she'll say yes. Okay. Uh, she said, no kids, but taking care of dozens of kids through being a nanny, is, et cetera. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so you had to watch how you uh, was authority over them. You had to watch how you behaved. You had to make well, you sure. had to, she also had to, and she didn't have direct authority because right. she was a nanny. She had to answer to somebody even though she was the authority. Right, person. that's why she had to watch what she was doing. Okay, so because there's still that authority that ling lingers over. And she said sure on the reading. Okay, so now we're going to ask why is she projecting herself to have the dream of it. And most generally it is to heal something. So now we're going to ask more specifically, what is it? So she's projected herself to have this dream. And I do feel like there is a male presence. Kind of makes me put my shoulders up as if, oh my God, I'm going to get in trouble. Um, he's on the, my right side of me. Uh, he's like, tell me, it's okay. Don't be freaked out. And I'm not freaked out. It's just maybe he's referring to you. Uh, I'm using the Enchanted Map by Colette Baron reed number 16, reversed. 16 is about rescue, and the reversed effect is, is are you trying to rescue another? Do you believe your love can change someone and miraculously heal this person? That goes with that protest again. Okay, one thing, you know, I, what I've learned and you and I have learned is that protesting was something that you had been taught this is what you have to do. Right, I mean... Our family is very politically active. That's how you make change, is you work with through the system, within the system, and if that doesn't work, you go out and you protest the system. Right, and what you've learned by all this healing is that if you want this to change out here, you have to actually change your belief about it so you will stop fueling to keeping what your illusion is. And keeping the fight alive. I, I am healing the idea of having to fight for what I want. It's going to... It, this is a big, major clue what I was working on, just to mm -hmm. have it. Now, the other thing is, 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 or are you waiting to be rescued? In some way, yes, because that means that your knight in shining armor will come. Um, being rescued, that sometimes taking on the world and, and surviving by yourself, or, you know, you just get tired. You almost forget to thrive. You would like that little helping hand that wants to just be there with you. Um, it says, do you believe that someone will sweep you off your feet and take you all away, all your troubles? I honestly, I did not know that was there. Reversed. The rescue card cautions you against romanticizing your situation right now. Look closely and see reality. It is rather than the illusion of how you would like to, it to be. You need to step back and rescue yourself. Trust the Spirit will guide you to expose the illusion so that you may discern the difference between truth and fantasy. Now, Yes, you have your heart, your head's on straight, but at the same time, you may see 
out there, people are abusing their authority. And if you look at it, you said your father was abusing you. <clears throat> Were you a child or an adult? That's kind of important in the dream, too. Because if you're an adult, then it, it'll be just like, on a point of view, people that are trying to lie to you and convince you and con con deceive you, and they know what buttons to push because you're an adult and they can maneuver that. Now, if you're a child, there's a lot more pushing that can happen and go around because there can be rewards and punishment. She was an adult in the dream. Okay. So, you, I think you're tired of also the male energy thinking they have the authority over you and you're supposed to comply. So... Or at least an older teen. Okay. So, young adult. A young adult. Um, because now, if you say young adult, you have to remember, that's where you're actually becoming you. You, when you're, you're younger you're, than that, you don't really pay attention to what you like and the core beliefs and these things. And you are at that stage of whether you're going to survive, thrive, or have you processed to the point where you're going to be happy. Right, you start differentiating yourself between um, your individuality and your family unit. Yes. At that point. Exactly. And if it wasn't a healthy situation or a separation, then it can get very violent. Like I watched my sister just have all kinds of issues when she was trying to become just her. She had an iron will, she was going to do what she was going to want. It doesn't mean that she was stubborn, that's what um, some people would call it, but she literally wanted to be heard, just like with you. You wanted to be heard and you wanted to be loved, but at the same time, the people that you were looking for guidance from didn't give it to you. No. So you, in a way, the only way to communicate, because you created that communication, was to be what, loud, um, obnoxious, rebellious. rebellious, that's the word. Right, which is funny, because that's what my mom would be, say, that she's proud of raising two daughters that are, are that independent, free-thinking, rebellious, you know, uh, nature. Well, I'm proud of my daughter for being able to do that. Because I know that she's not going to get stepped on. But I didn't raise her to protest. She raised to protest herself. Yeah. And it's like, oh. You know, and so when I look, think back, where was it that I failed her? Now, you got to remember, you, it's not about failing in the same way. It's about how I had to show up to her. And she, regardless, even if I showed up correctly, she would have to still see me as not doing it. Mm -hmm. We have, you talk about errors where nobody knew how to teach their children how to process the hells that are going on. I mean, you can learn to talk it out. You can learn to just, you know, pray. You can learn to this. But the emotional chemical peptide mark that it leaves hasn't learned to be processed out. And that's what needs to be processed out. And so my daughter is now learning all of these tools. And holy cow, we have watched she's her. She's launching. She's going to town. She's happier. She's healthier. She's stronger. She's getting more courage, and she's building that self-esteem with inside of her, so where, because before it was like she'd have to fight, and it's like, honey, you know, you don't really have to. You really do have all this wonderful stuff right here. You know, so she learned. Um, anybody say anything? So, um, she said, given what I've heard so far, I understand why this might have come back to mind, but 18 years ago, hmm, I was in the middle of uh, four years of depression. Aha. Uh -huh. So, if you're in the middle of depression, now here's the thing. If She said it started 18 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. In the middle of depression, sometimes I told you, like, the only way to really combat fear is to anger. Correct. Well, what are you supposed to do when you combat depression? Anger. Well, and depression is anger tur turned inward. Mm -hmm. So, if you have somebody that, or if you're dreaming of that maybe you've been abused, now you got to remember, also with depression, you have a tendency to create stories that did or didn't happen. They become real. And then you create more chemical peptides, and it's a continuous loop. You need, you know, when you tap that into that and you tap it out, it literally starts to create where you can get to the end, you know, and, and do I really need to go back? And that's where a lot of people are so familiar with their identity that they choose to go back to that loop and, and there's nothing wrong with that, it just means there's more healing. You're, you're going to have to really heal those deeper layers in order to really break that chain because it's already broken, you just haven't convinced yourself yet.
Right, and I mean, in that thought process, we talk about how life is 10% of what happens and then 90% of what we, is 90% of what we tell ourselves. So it's those stories and our perceptions and our reactions to what's going on that becomes our story. Exactly. She said anything else? There's somebody else chatting. Oh, okay. Which is fine. All right, so one of the things is, is that, now I'm going to just tap in another layer because it is your dad's present. I'm going to ask the spirits if they're, oh, I'm feeling very jumpy, like down into the second chakra. Okay. Hmm. You like the fact how you said, oh, I am grandpa. He was laughing at that. Oh, I'm sure it's hilarious. I mean, well, no, Can I what? talk to you? Can I talk to her? Like, <laughs> that would well, be really funny. Because this is a you know, ghost channel. Let's do this. So, you know, if you want to open up, you can go ahead and let him talk through you. Right now only. <laughs> thank Later. You. No, you're, thank you for those parameters. Yeah, after a few minutes, it will be shut. Um, what I'm getting is, okay, so yeah, he's very much present. I'm starting to sweat. There were things that he just couldn't articulate to you. He uh, had a lot of wounded pride. Yeah, he would. He wanted to say things, but it's like that's not how a father's supposed to talk to his daughter at that point in time. Um, he knows there's a big difference between who he was and, and who he is now, he says, and it's kind of almost hard to some degree to articulate that. Right, he's got a lot of heartache in, in, in the inability uh, of uh, not expressing. He has a lot of spiritual issues, hon. Um, what's interesting is that you've learned to forgive, and you've learned to forgive, and you've learned to forgive, and the reason why it happened when it started at your, at, as far as the depression goes was that something happened at three years old where you became mortified and draining of the strength. Now you have to understand, it doesn't mean he abused her. He could have and he may not have. It could be just as simply raising your voice and yelling. And her perception. And her perception could see it as really monstrous. Um, and she also is kind of familiar like I am, which means for her to feel it will probably feel like more if somebody punched you. Because when you physically get hurt, punched, it hurts. But on another scale, that vibration of energy that you don't see coming can hurt just the same because you don't have the filters. Does this make sense? Yes. You have no idea what you said yes to. Filters. Correct. She's, I mean, she's gone. I've watched her flip out. She took off. I'm like, oh, well, thanks, thanks, thanks for abandoning me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she says, always, oh, God, it's hard to breathe. He I always felt he was scared of me or didn't know what to do with me. I was sort of a hard one to deal with growing up. And she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could say that for you. Yeah, Jen, do you notice your change in color? How am I supposed to notice if I'm changing color when I can't see myself? You can if you paid attention to the the feeling. Oh, yeah. And your eyes have changed. Uh -huh. And you, I know you know that feeling of your eyes changing. Uh -huh. So, um, so she must get him prepared to speak. Well, that was kind of funny. So, it, you know, will she be brave enough to allow it to come through? That's up to her. He, that said, he says that you're accurate on not knowing what to do with you. Um, uh, the father-daughter thing. I don't know what uh, what year she was born, but that era. Um, you don't know what to do with girls sometimes. Right. I mean, the father-daughter relationship is a tricky one because you have that love to express, but then it's like, whoa. You it know? reminds us of our friend. She wanted her dad's attention. She was supposed to be a boy. She came out a girl, and she wanted her dad's attention. She did everything boyish, and then by the time she started to grow boobs, he wanted nothing to do with her because he did. It's not because he didn't love her. He just did not know how to handle a girl and girl issues and.